Traditional pagination works by combining an offset and a limit in order to fetch records for a given page. This approach is a bit problematic from a performance standpoint, however, because as we read more and more pages, this offset will increase as well. And under the hood, the SQL server actually starts from the very beginning, every single time, up to the offset in order to fetch just the last few records we're interested in. So as we read more and more pages, it will need to do more work, even though it always fetches the same number of records. And this is where cursor-based pagination comes into play. It works by keeping track of the last record and paginating things from there. Now, granted, the users themselves might not click around too far from the first page, but web crawlers and bots do. Or maybe you expose an API endpoint to your customers who may go over the entire data set you've put at their disposal. Offset-based pagination has one other problem as well, and that is data consistency. So imagine having a website that has endless pagination that is, as you scroll down, more and more records get loaded. So if in the meantime, a new post is created, you will end up seeing duplicate information. And this is especially bad for API consumers. In any case, these sorts of problems are not possible with cursor-based pagination. So if you're not interested in page numbers, that is, Reading one page after the other is all you need, then cursor-based pagination will help you. So next up, let's look at a more practical example. We're going to implement cursor-based pagination on this website, which has quite a few records. So how would we go about it? Well, first of all, let's jump to the controller. I'll go to the post controller. And as you can see, things are sorted ascending by the ID. And speaking of IDs, the value we have here, this is actually the post ID. So we can reason with the cursor-based pagination easier. So first of all, let's add a limit here. Let's say limit 10. And now we will see just 10 records. So if we want to see page number two, well, the last record on this page is the one with ID number 10. So in order to fetch the next page, we want basically IDs that have, well, records that have the ID greater than uh, 10. So let's have a look. So now we are basically on page number two. Anyway, let's read this from a parameter. So I'll just do here params, maybe last post. I think that sounds good. So now if I refresh, well, we don't see anything because last post is nil, but I'll typecast it to an integer. So basically it will be zero when there's no value here. So let's refresh it again. And we can see this is the first page. And if we provided the last post, I think, then the last ID, as I said, was 10. So now we are basically on the second page. And if we want the next post, then, I mean, the next page, then we put here 20. Anyway, let's actually create some navigation for this because we can't just add values ourselves all the time. So let's jump to the view of the page we've just seen. And here I'm going to create a link that we'll be using to load more pages. So let's name this maybe more questions because this is a questions and answer website. And this should be basically the path we've the parameter we just created. So this is last post and the value should be the ID of the last post. So this should be posts.last.id. Now we don't really need to use ID here because Rails will know how to 
input this automatically based on the type. However, I don't like the idea of this getting called twice, the query that is. Now granted Rails does cache this value, but I don't like to leave it to chance. So I'm going to typecast this to an array. So let's have a look. Cool, so we have a link here. And when I click on it, I can see I'm right now on the second page. And if I click again, I'm on the third one and so on. Now this does have a problem. And that is when we reach the end, we don't know where on that last page. So when I click more questions right now, I can't see anything. In order to determine if we're on the last page or not, I'm going to load one extra record. We're not going to show this record, but we'll pass it around in order to determine if there are more posts to load. So rather than passing here last post, we're going to pass in the next post. And basically this is the ID of the first post on the next page. So this should be now rather than greater than, it should be greater or equal. So let's rename this all posts and create another variable again called post. And this should be the post that we show to the user. So this should be only 10, 0 to 9. And let's store the last post, which has the ID that will pass around. So this should be next post equals and all posts. And here we will do 10. Now, bear in mind one thing, don't try to optimize this, put here minus two, here minus one, for example, because if you do that, the next post will always have a value, and this is not what we want to do. Having this said, let's jump to the view, and here we're going to add a condition. So only if the value of next post is set only then we would show the link and of course the parameter shouldn't be last post anymore it will be next post and the id that we pass around is next post again cool so now if we refresh the page we can see the id that we're passing around is 11 instead of 10. however the first one here is 11 like before which is good. Anyway, let's jump to the last page, which was 90 something. And you can see the link is gone here. So right now we are displaying things in ascending order. So this means that the newest entries are at the end. But for this sort of site, you usually want things the other way around. You want the newest things to be on the first page. So let's make this change here. So rather than using ascending order, we're going to use descending, which basically means the where condition should be reversed. However, this does raise a problem because previously in order to fetch the first post, we could just put here ID zero. But when we want to fetch the last post, like we do now, we would need a very big value, which could be like a big integer, for example, or we could maybe get the max size of x num. But ultimately, this is not a good approach because, for example, we're using ID, which is a number, but maybe in the future we might be using, who knows, maybe a timestamp here. So we need another way of handling this. So the best way is to not do this query at all when we're on the first page. So for example, if we pass here nil, then this query won't get executed. So in order to do this, I'm going to create a conditional. Let's call this pagination conditions equals. And if we have the params next page present, well, next post present, only then would we actually perform the query. And if not, we're going to return nil. So then we could just 
call this variable here. And now if we refresh the page, we can see things are in the right order and we can actually go to all the questions now. If we actually create a new record, we will see that the pagination hasn't hasn't changed. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a post title. This is a question and offer should be my name. Cool. So now if I refresh the page, we can see here this hasn't been offset at all. Whereas if we go here, we can see the question I've just created. And this is basically the advantage that cursor based pagination gives you. But bear in mind, this does have its own share of limitations, like you can't jump to a specific page number, like I said earlier, and even sorting by multiple attributes is problematic. However, it's certainly gotten really, really popular in the last few years. Anyway, I hope you found this useful.